Oh, hi, welcome back to our channel. Today's video is a part of our tips and tricks tutorial series of my showing how I specifically do things based on questions I am frequently asked when it comes to crochet, a how does Andrea do it tutorial series, if you will. Today, I will be showing you how I do my current most asked thing, how to crochet the start of a granny hexagon for a cardigan. Now, this video will not be showing you how to make the entire cardigan. As I mentioned, these are just little mini tips and tricks tutorials to answer questions on things that I am frequently asked. And again, this will just show you how I start my hexagon and little tips and tricks on what I do with them to be able to get the same outcome as I do. And of course, if you enjoy this style video, be sure to subscribe to our channel for more. Now let's get started. For this tips and tricks video, what I'm going to do is I will show you the materials that I personally like to use when I create a granny hexagon cardigan. Now this will vary depending on you and your own personal preferences. So for example, you don't have to use the same type of yarn, the same style of yarn, the same weight of yarn, and everybody's tension varies. So that will vary in the size of hook that you will need to use as well. Now I personally use uh, worsted weight yarn. So worsted four weight yarns. Now for example you can see that here on the back it will say that typically for this weight yarn you should use a five millimeter hook again that is just preference and it will vary depending on the project that you were working on i personally use a j six millimeter this is one of our hooks uh, and it is a clover base brand metal neck um, so yeah that is just uh, the materials that i will be using and again remember that it varies on your own personal tension and of course what you're wanting out of your project. As I mentioned, these videos are more my tips and tricks and not a overall how-to on how to create something. So the one thing that I get asked all the time is, what hook size to use. So I do really wanna step in one more time on that. Again, just because I personally use a J6 millimeter hook, it does not mean that that is the hook size that you will need to use. It really comes down to your own tension. I see people ranging anywhere from a 3.5 millimeter all the way up to a 10 millimeter. Now the key with this pattern is, is that you really wanna have a nice loose tension. So if you naturally already have what I like to call an amigurumi tension, which is just a very overall tight, tension um you really want to make sure that you can bump up your hook size unless you are really good at controlling that tension naturally so again use what hook size gives you the looseness and the tension that you need specifically for your stitches for this pattern there are a few different ways that you can start your granny hexagon however i personally prefer over the magic circle doing a slip stitch with a chain three and creating a circle now keep in mind everybody does their slip stitches a little bit different so do them how you wish and again i do a chain three i will keep a somewhat loose tension but overall my stitches are going to stay even now once i have my chain three i will go back into this i like to call it the back bump there's different variations in terms for what this is but this little top loop bump right here is what i will go into i will be going into that to create my circle from my chain and do a slip stitch now this is going to create a fairly tight circle which is why you want to make sure that you have a little bit looser of a tension you always want to kind of go through and pull apart because this center of the circle is where you are going to be working into Another little tip that I would like to give is watch the way that you carry your tension with how you hold your yarn. Everybody is going to do this a little bit different and that's okay, but um, I found that some people that like to wrap multiple times will naturally get a tighter tension. So this also might be something that if you do find that you have a tight tension that you are unable to loosen, that you could try to work on and uh, see if there's a different way that you could find to hold your yarn so that you can keep a nice loose controlled tension while you work. So from here, while we have our chain three starting circle, I will create another chain three. And remember, keep that loose tension. You just wanna make sure it is controlled so your stitches and everything stay even with each other. You keep a nice, loose, controlled tension. And you will hear me mention that many times, but that is the biggest key that I can give. Now my chain threes will always count as a starting uh, double crochet for this specific stitch pattern. That is my personal preference. You can do a chain two if you would like, but I just find a chain three works really nicely with this to keep that loose tension. So after the chain three, I am going to do two more double crochets directly in the center of the circle. So to do a double crochet, which of course, if you 
should already know this, but in case you don't, you yarn over, you will go into the center of this circle, you yarn over and pull through, and you have three loops on your hook, you yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And that is how you get your double crochet. So because of the fact that I am keeping, again, loose tension, I am going to have some height here in that first stitch, which equals up to my chain three, which is again, my personal preference. And then we do one more double crochet in the center of this circle. And that will give us our first granny cluster or a cluster specifically for this hexagon. I will not have to overly explain anything else, so do not worry. We are going to be able to move along fairly quickly here. So for me personally, what you're going to be doing is another chain three, and this is going to give you a corner. This is the only times that I chain, other than the starting of my next clusters, which I will get to, I chain three in my corners. You have to have a starting of six clusters and six corners. So because of the fact that this circle is is fairly tight I tend to just kind of move that cluster over we are going to after that chain three put another three double crochets in the center of the circle to create another cluster and ultimately that's what we're going to be doing is creating those six clusters and six corners so another chain three Again, I try to scooch over. I will typically do on the side of this knot here from my slip stitch, three clusters on that side and then three clusters on the other side. It's just personal preference. It's just the way that I like to do it. And I feel like ultimately in my brain, it just makes it a little easier. So we are going to do another three double crochets to get us our third cluster, because don't forget that first chain three counted as our first double crochet in that first cluster. So here we have one cluster, a chain three, which is a corner, another cluster, a chain three as a corner, another cluster. So what I'm going to do is I will chain three, we have a corner, and we're going to do another cluster of three. There's four, get another corner. I'm gonna scooch this because I have to get two more in here. We have another three double crochets to give us another cluster. Three chains for a corner. We have one, two, three, four, five. And then scooch that, we get one more cluster of three double crochets. And then the most important part to remember here is to get that last three chains for that sixth corner. Now what I'm going to do is here is our first chain three. I'm going to go into the very top chain, which is the third chain up, and I'm going to slip stitch directly through. And that is the connection of the very beginning of the granny hexagon. Now from here on out, I'm going to move fairly quickly and most likely speed this up just a bit for you because overall, this is a fairly simplistic stitch pattern. I don't do anything crazy and hectic, but this first next round, I will explain what I do and it will kind of give you a little insight in on how I get my shape along with my tension for my overall look. Now that we have the beginning hexagon, what I like to do to start my next row, since we connected with a slip stitch, I will do another chain three. I always do a chain three to start my rows. Now from here, I could go ahead and make a beginning cluster, but I am not going to do that. I am going to skip directly over into this corner. All of your chain threes are your corners. You can already see this is a little wobbly, and that is key to this to be able to get your cardigan, is you need this hexagon to be very wobbly for you. But we are going to go ahead and skip right over here into this and this is the only place that we were going to work our clusters this time is into these corners so what we will do is we're going to skip in and do three double crochets to get one cluster into that first corner I'm going to do another chain three because we're creating a corner and put three more double crochets into that same corner which gives you a second cluster and we have one corner here we are now going to move to the next corner do three double crochets, a chain three, three more double crochets in your corner, Oops. and that will create this space for the following round. I am going to go ahead and speed this video up to complete this round and I will see you back at the end.
This last section here, as you can see, I already put the very first uh, granny cluster in here. Now this is where we should have this connection here to end this round. So what we're going to do is you put your first granny cluster in here, you will chain three, and you already have your beginning chain three. So all we're going to do is put another, I, as you can see, I spaced that over. I put another two double crochets in here. Oops. And then we're going to connect into the third slip stitch up from that chain three and that will create another cluster right here for us. Now this ends the second round and I'm going to show you a couple little things about this. A few quick points on how I specifically do my granny hexagons. Two things I am asked the absolute most is do I put chains between my clusters and how many chains I put in the corners. I do not put chains between my clusters at all and I always will put three chains in my corners. This is personal preference. I feel like having no chains between the clusters keeps a nice and tidy look overall to them so that they don't have an overall loose look to the clusters. Ultimately, if you can keep that looser tension, you will still have nice flow to it, but it will just keep them nice and tight looking with your clusters. And then again, personal preference with the chains in the corners. I do suggest keeping at least two. I've never done four. Again, personal preference, but that is what I do. And we are going to move on to round three so that I can show you what I do in between. And then from there, you should be good to go. For round three of the granny hexagon, we are going to start and do it the exact same way. Always a chain three. And then we will skip over here to this first chain three corner. And then we will go from there. So we are going to go in and put, same as before, three double crochets. And then we will do three chains and another three double crochets to get us our first corner. Now, instead of jumping over here to the corner like we did in round two, we have this space between here. All I do is I loop directly in underneath and I will stitch a cluster of three double crochets right in between. And again, as long as you are working with a nice even and loose tension, it won't be overly tight and it will also help ultimately give you a nice closed cluster. Again, personal preference on just how it looks, but this is again just a video on how I specifically do it. We are moving right over to that next corner with another three double crochets to get a granny cluster, three chains, and then another three double crochets for another granny cluster. And that is our first side. And then you will see this is going to constantly increase and you will have now two extra spaces between clusters and then your corners. And then you will see it progress to where you will then end up with three, four, five as you continue around. So I am going to go ahead and I will speed this up to finish this round and answer any final questions. Okay, let's just keep this a little real here. Everybody deals with knots. I tried to pre-pull some of this yarn out, but yet here we are. So I'm going to go ahead and get this untangled and then we will start back up. Here we are coming to the end of the third round of the granny hexagon and we are going to have to place a cluster here. Now again, we already have this first chain three, which counts as one of the stitches of one of our clusters. So what I personally like to do is right here where you can see that you went into this chain three below, I like to wrap all the way around. So I will go over this entire little section right here and I will create two more double crochets to complete our cluster. Well, let's, let's pretend that that didn't happen. We're going to go around. Let's try one more time and a double crochet. We are going to do one more double crochet in the exact same way where we wrap around. And then we will be connecting to the top chain of that chain three with a slip stitch. And that creates our little cluster right there. 
and that is the row in three. Now to continue on with your hexagon, you will do the same thing we did before with a three chain at the beginning. Move to your corner and complete one of our corners, which is three double crochets, a chain three, and three double crochets. So a cluster, a chain three, and a cluster. You will then move to each of these spots and put a cluster in each one. So three double crochets in each one of these and then move and continue your corners. You will do that all the way back around to your connection and then repeat the way that we did the connection in round three. I mentioned this is not going to be a complete tutorial on how to do the entire cardigan. This is just answering those questions that I get all the time, such as how I start my hexagon, what I do in the corners, what I do between my clusters, et cetera, and then answering, of course, the style yarn that I like to use and my hook size. In the description below, you will find a linked tutorial on how to complete a granny hexagon cardigan. Now, as I mentioned, I don't follow any specific pattern for mine, so you will notice that the outcome is not exactly the same. I will go ahead and have more tutorials here on our channel to be able to show you other tips and tricks on things that I like to do with mine, but that linked tutorial that I give will absolutely give you a very, very lovely outcome and as I mentioned very easily modifiable so that you can do what you like with yours. Last key point that I would like to mention about these hexagons with creating the cardigan as you can see this is fairly small so this is not going to give you an overall great idea on the shape but you can already see that this has a waver it has a wobble to them it is not going to lay flat and that is key to this specific pattern stitch to be able to get you the cardigan because overall what you will end up doing is you will fold it in half now again this is not going to be able to give you the shape that you need quite yet but when you fold it in half one of the sides will create the l so that you get the arm and the sleeve section and the body section if this was larger it would give you a little bit better of an idea but you do want to have have the wobble to it you want that waiver and that is something that a lot of people worry about when they see that it's not laying flat it is key to get this to fold the way you want it to as always thank you for watching and i hope this little tips and tricks video was helpful i wanted to make sure that i could answer any of those questions to be able to really show how i started my hexagons as well as what i like to do for them if you have any further questions let me know and make sure to keep those suggestions coming on any further tutorials or tips and tricks videos that you would like to see on how i specifically specifically do them. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on post notifications so that you can see more tutorials and videos as they come. Thanks guys!